What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we gotta talk about what happened on this episode of SmackDown, uh, the first night of the WWE draft. And to be honest with you, this draft was kind of meh. Not many people switched brands. To be honest with you, it wasn't really too many surprises. Um, it was kind of a run of run of the mill show. To be honest, uh, the best part of the show was the bloodline stuff. And that's what I'm here to talk to y'all about. Because this stuff was fucking fantastic. The draft side of things was, like I said, middle of the road. Not many people switched brands. Pretty much people were saying, staying on the same brands they were already on. So, uh, But we got to talk about what's going on with the bloodline stuff. So to start off the show, uh, Paul Heyman was asked... Where would Roman Reigns be going to? Would he be part of the draft? And we found out that Roman Reigns had pretty much withdrawn from the draft. Uh, he's going to be away for some time. And Paul said he didn't want him to take up the number one spot. As we know he probably would. Even though he wouldn't be on television for the foreseeable future for a while. So he um, was pretty much excluding himself out of this year's draft which i think roman reigns has gotten to that point where he can float between shows it really doesn't matter but most likely he's still gonna be on smackdown but they'll probably give him the option to float between shows kind of like what the rock does as well he's gotten to that status he can do that so he won't technically be involved he wasn't involved in this year's draft because he's not gonna be there so um for a while so that made sense but if you paid attention, if you paid attention, Paul Heyman was sending some shots. He said, the true tribal chief has announced what's going to happen here. Like, this is his decision. He was sending shots to Solo, you know, who's kind of taking over this tribal chief role persona. So, and this is before Solo even arrived. So, we cut back to a, la a later segment. Uh, you see a black van pull up. You see Tama Tonga. On one side of the van, there's like a light. You could see him in the van. But you couldn't see Solo. And Paul Heyman's just sitting there waiting as the van pulls up. And Paul Heyman eventually goes to the door to open the door. And he, you know, he, he makes a comment like, I'm so used to opening the door for Roman Reigns. Like, I, I, I keep forgetting I got to open up the door for you now. And once again, Solo got the suit jacket on. He kind of has some like Hitman gloves on. They're all black, and um, pretty much he he's he he's operating as the tribal chief. He's over here asking Wise Man, "Have the bloodline been drafted yet?" And Paul's like, "No, you guys haven't been drafted because you 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 know." We, we don't know what's going on. You've added new members to the bloodline. And then that's when you see Tama Tunga come out. And Paul Heyman's freaking out. He's shaking. He's visibly shaking. And Solo's like, wait, what? We haven't been drafted. So then he says, I'm going to ask you one more time, Paul Heyman. Why haven't we been drafted? What brand are we going to be on? Intimidating pretty much Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman's shook. Love this. Paul Heyman's over here. He doesn't know what to do. And all of a sudden, KO comes out of nowhere. He blasts fucking Solo from behind and starts attacking Tama Tonga. And they start brawling in the, in the backstage area. Oh, so great. They had to get security to pull them apart. This was fantastic. KO is the definition of on sight he doesn't wait he got packed up last week with you know bleeding from the skull he's back this week and it was on site loved it this was so fun bro they tama tonga is just a madman and he's they try to rip each other apart at one point it looked like kevin Owens was trying to scratch tama tonga's eyes out it was fantastic right so they get everything under control there we cut to a segment where um Bianca, who is uh, the number one draft pick for this year, Bianca comes out there, talk about, you know, hopefully her and Jay can stay on the same roster um, so they can def uh, defeat uh, the Kabuki Warriors. 
the Kabuki Warriors come out. They talking they trash. And then uh, Jay comes out there with Bianca. And they and all of them talking trash to each other. And then there's a camera position right in the middle of, of the Kabuki Warriors and Jade and, and Bianca. And you can see Kevin Owens and Tama Tonga just sprawling all the way down the rampway. The ladies move out the way. They're throwing hands. They're fighting. I'm like, this is what I'm talking about. Love the chaos. Love the, the violence. They get in the ring and KO say, nah, I'm not having it. They start brawling. But then Solo Sokoa comes out there and he obviously, the, you know, makes things a little bit tougher for Kevin Owens. The numbers game gets to him. He starts to get packed up. He's starting to get jumped. And then uh, I want to say security starts to come out there. The security people start coming out there and Tama Tonga is just unhinged. He's attacking officials. He's attacking security people. They're getting thrown left and right. And then finally, finally, someone comes out there and it's Randy Orton. Randy Orton comes out there to make the save and they start brawling. And, you know, he doesn't really get too many hits in only because they try to leave. Randy Orton said, fuck that invisible wall shit. He tries to meet them and, and bring the fight to them. But, of course, more security and personnel get between them. And even Kevin Owens said, fuck the invisible wall shit with the ropes. He tries to go out there up the ramp to get them. But ultimately, more security stop him as well. Great, great brawling segment. Cool to see KO and Randy Orton team up. And uh, it was announced later on in the show, I believe that Backlash is going to be uh, Tama Tonga and Solo versus Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. It's going to be a fucking fire match, bro. Can't wait. And it does lead me to believe that we may see the debut of Jacob Fatu. It makes sense. We may see the debut of Jacob Fatu, bro. It makes sense. I'm all for it. If he debuts at Backlash, that's the perfect way to debut. Because I think that match is just going to be chaos. And I think we're. I'm all for it. It's going to be chaos. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. It's crazy to say. I'm probably, I'm definitely hyped. That's probably the most, the match I'm most hyped about. And I think the AJ and, and, and uh, Cody match will deliver. But I'm really the most hyped for this bloodline situation. And potentially seeing Jacob Fatu, that's going to be great. Cool to see Randy and KO team up. They all have history with the bloodline. It makes sense. They all had history with the bloodline. So, I'm all for this. This is going to be fantastic. Can't wait to see what they do um, at Backlash. And if we do see Jacob Fatu make his debut in that, uh, in that potential match, either uh, during the match or after the match, Will he making his WWE appearance? So we will see. But comment down below. Let me know. Do y'all think Jacob Fatu will be making his appearance at this year's Backlash to be a part and maybe help Solo and Tomatonga uh, against Kevin uh, Kevin Owens and Randy Orton? Because I do think that's a good possibility, and that may be the route they're going with. So y'all let me know if y'all think that is on the horizon. But I appreciate all the love and support. Bro, 250K, and I'm seeing you on the YouTube Wrestling Champion of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.